Good day, gentlemen and ladies. Today, the subject of my video will be how do I clean my MS-250 for long-term storage, okay? In my situation, during the winter, I don't do any wood cutting. It's mainly from spring to late fall. And uh, on my uh, MS-250, I already had done the uh, the long winter storage for uh, in my case uh, the good six months. But remember one of my videos, I had a call of a free firewood, and I uh, I made firewood. So basically, I decided to uh, do a, another video uh, how I put. Uh, but especially I'm gonna put more emphasis on uh, uh, emphasis <laughs> it's not even a word I'm gonna focus on how I store my all my chainsaws as you know I have a lot of uh, antique home lights I've got six of them three of them in good working order uh, Probably I will be able to bring one more, so I'm going to have four in good working order and two will be for sport. Alright, so stick around, I'm going to explain you in detail what I do about my chainsaw, okay? Alright, so what I do, the very first step is I use compressed air to remove all the, the dust all around. So. What, how I proceed is I start from the front all the way to the back and then all around but especially the cooling crankcase around here because it's very important that uh, the blower work in very uh, in good manners so it cool down the engine because these are air cool uh, two stroke uh, gasoline mix engine alright so I'm gonna proceed with that Okay, so once I blow everything out, then I start to things apart. To take, uh, I, I take off the cover here. I will clean that. Make sure then you put full choke when you remove the dust cover because you don't want anything uh, going inside the engine. So I'm gonna remove the uh, the cover very lightly like so really I'm able to do it I'm gonna take a screwdriver and sadly I forgot my glasses there we go oh sorry I told you to put the choke, the choke is it's all the way down, I should remember that. So the choke is clo closed. I'm gonna start to uh, clean away the, uh, the hair filter. All right. Then I'm gonna take the, uh, the cover. Same thing. Now all around the spark plug area, the, uh, there, this is why you don't want to put any hair, but not too much, well, not directly, because me breaks uh, the little choke uh, valve, basically. So uh, just a, li a little bit air like this on the side. Now here where the, pa the spark plug is very important. Trust me, whew, a very, a, a, a very much a lot of dust. Okay, now 
with a clean rag. This is a clean rag here. I'm just going to pass inside to catch everything which is stick with the fuel mix inside the uh, the uh, the hair filter receiver where you attach the air filter. I put a screwdriver and I and I just clean very and especially in the down here and all around. Once that is accomplished, then I put the dust cover back, making sure it's the right way. Yes. And again, if I had my glasses with me, great. All right, but I have to remove it <laughs> unless I can take off. Yeah, I have to remove it. because I need to remove the spark plug the spark plug is not that easy to remove now give me one second I'm gonna get the, the spark plug removing too now uh, when you buy a chain so you get the screwdriver with a spark plug remover and the chain so uh, you can use that but yeah I rather use the uh, true So why am I removing this power plug? The reason why I want to check... Oh, oh I was unscrewing the, uh, the contact. I want to check if the power plug burn well. And if you have a nice power plug like this, like brown color, no, no oily, that means the carburetor is doing its job, you have a great fuel, the mixture is doing well, okay? And I can tell from a distance, because I don't have my glasses, uh, I changed the power plug last year, and uh, it was a, a very nice uh, one. And these power plugs, no, it's not that chance of, because I can see right now, this is not the original spark plug. This is a champion spark plug. It's doing fine, but uh, still, it doesn't came with a champion spark plug. It's a uh, champion. Uh, I forget the name. Of, it's a. Uh, but what I recommend, uh, you can use various type of uh, spark plug. But like again, this is champion. Is the lowest quality, but it's doing fine. Okay, so I will change it. Now, the, the other reason why I'm taking off this power plug is because for the long storage, I all, always, for my generator, everything for storage, I will oil the piston head. The piston head will lubricate the cylinder and also the piston rings, so nothing will corrode and it will let the protection. So remember, Oil is for lubricating, cleaning, and also prevent corrosion. So stick around, I'm gonna get my oiler. Okay, just remember I use always SE SAE uh, 30 oil. It's, it doesn't have any salt, no, not, not SEW. Don't use W, it's for washing. Oil is for only lubricating, and what I do, I, I put a, a, fair, a, a good uh, two, three stroke in there, and slowly. Slowly, <laughs> yeah, I was quite generous. Uh, I uh, get the uh, and I I I'm, I just make sure that the uh, in various 
So that way the oil has a good chance to drip everywhere. All right. So now I'm going to install after that and the first stroke I had a little bit much oil, too much oil, but I'm just going to reinstall the spark plug. I'm going to put a tag to remind me to change the spark plug even. Well, it worked very really good, but I'm going to change it. Don't go tree, uh, crazy when you talk uh, your, your spark plug. That's it. And sometimes... There you go. Okay. Perfect. Now, for the rest... What I will do is reinstall the, the cover, just make sure that I don't put any uh, dust in there. Alright, reinstall back the, uh, the cover. Voila, I'm going to use a rag. Now, I'm not going to install, because I have a couple of uh, resin uh, pine sap. And I had a lot of folks asking me how you remove the paint sap from the, uh, it's, it's sticking, I have stick here around the bar, so I'm, what I do is, the next step is always, always empty the fuel inside my uh, chainsaw for storage. And I always put the loose cap so it, it does ventilate. So I'm just gonna throw the remaining fuel I have in there. And why did I leave the uh, loose cap? Because of course the filter, the, the gas filter inside will remain a little bit of fuel. Then the fuel line is not probably empty. I can start the train and empty it, but you always we, we, uh, have fuel. So by keeping the fuel cap loose, that fuel will, will evaporate. Right now I'm gonna close it back because I'm going to play with a lot of stuff. Now, with the remaining fuel, what I do is I just dip my fuel, my rag onto the fuel, and then I, and that's how I remove all the uh, the gunk from the uh, the pine, the soft wood, uh, pine trees. Uh, what's the, the word? Cedar. And that's how I uh, I remove all the uh, the sticky stuff, and that apply also as I'm going to about to demonstrate to you. There's the sap here, so what I just take the fuel and I just let it let it, uh, and I hope you're able to see. I just let it uh, work, like I just put a general code about it, and let the uh, the fuel do its trick. And I will do the same thing all around the casing here. I'm gonna remove that casing later on, but just let it uh, do its trick. And then, slowly but surely, I can remove all the, uh, simply with the rag. You can already see, it's working pretty good, so. Uh, be aware, don't get yourself cut with the chain. And I'm doing that now, why I'm using fuel now and not at the end, because I'm gonna lubricate the bar with oil, the same oil I'm using to the, uh, and look at that, I have no more sap, or well, almost none. I'm gonna go on the other side work, because this side I had more. Go that 
thing is gone now. I have here some. You can use a scarf pad if you want, but I just to put a little, let the fuel do his uh, his job. Is uh, if you want, you can take a screwdriver through the rag and just do it like right on the side like this. Not like this. Just use the side of the screwdriver, and that will be with the rag. Always having the rag between. And that way you're able to remove all nicely all the sap. You can put even two uh, two uh, two uh, rows of cloth. There we go. <laughs> like brand new. Uh, I get something in there. I know my good friend Russell from uh, Russell Bellivo was asking me how I keep my chain and Russell I have a lot of uh, soft wood too so Russell that's uh, that's for you my friend that's how I do it keep my old uh, this chainsaw is more than 15 years old by the way the owner I bought it uh, what I bought it from the it was from uh, in 2011 in Shefford but the guy or uh, the or the previous owner had it like uh, two three years before. So, uh, but I I get the bill, and that's why I'm telling you it's more than 15 years. So, here we go. So I keep the the thing there, the screwdriver. So I know now the chain, the bar is very clean. Uh, for the plastic, I'm going to do the the same thing. But however, I'm going to remove the uh, the cover. And one thing I like to tell you, most uh, the spark plugs, most of the chainsaw, and I'm challenging you, warning, no, it's not a warning. The spark plug size, the socket size of the spark plug, the size, the diameter of the spark plug, usually is the same diameter of the bolts holding the bars. And I'm, I'm challenging you, oops, <laughs> this one is quite wet. To, uh, Jesus, that, that was way too tight. I have a crime sometimes with my uh, personal talk French. And, uh, oh, okay, I know what's going on. It's the outside diameter of the... Uh, so the diameter of the spark plug often, because of the wrench too, remember, will be the same as the most of the... I know my own lights. There's two diameter, one for the, the screw, the other one for the spark plug, but most spark plug, as you just reasoning, that was, I use the same tool for the spark plug than this. So, I'm just gonna take off the cover, put the bolt aside. Now, you can see it's all dirty. So right now, that portion, I'm just gonna blow, hair blow with. Like I told you, I always use my oil to oil the, the chain after I clean it, uh, file it. And that oil, it's the first oil get in contact with the cover and it's so much easier to clean than only uh, uh, usually the, uh, the oil bar would get mixed with the sawdust. But the first coat they have, it's that oil and it, like you just witnessed, it's already clean. So uh, that's why I'm telling you, using the oil after you clean your chain, you filing and you, know, you file it, then you clean it, and then you oil it. You put a nice coat of oil over the chain. The oil obviously will get away because of the spinning rotation uh, action. It will get all the cover, and it made the sawdust uh, easier to remove. Okay, as you notice here, the uh, uh, the chain catcher is broken on this one because it already had happened once, but. Uh, I should change that part because the chain catcher, when the chain break, is always to catch and not, you're not going to get injured, so that's why it's important. So make sure you clean it. Now, I've got a little bit of a, of a pine 
cruise. What else did I got last summer or spring? So I'm just gonna clean it like uh, I'm gonna demonstrate to you. So we can regain his uh, former glory. And clean is a uh, fuel is a real and even if it's mixed oil, the oil in there will uh, it's help to clean too. So and it doesn't hurt to uh, just be careful when you use a screwdriver. Even you have uh, like a harder uh, stuff to remove. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's <laughs> much better. Alright. Now the inside I do the same. Just remove everything. Like here, this is sawdust like melted almost. But uh, look at that, like because of the oil, like whew, it just goes away like this. And look at that. All right, so I'm just gonna put the part, and you can see the end result inside very clean. Now, the remaining of the chainsaw around here, what I do is, I'm just gonna disconnect the chain. I'm gonna put the chain like this, then I'm gonna remove the bar. And again, I'm gonna put a nice uh, hair pressure a little bit away from the table. Put that on the side. All right. I know last summer I did a video because I was catching a lot of sand when I had that uh, free firewood. Remember that uh, German Shepherd? So I'm just gonna remove the sear clip here, put the clutch there, uh, remove the brake end, that will help, and then remove the bearing. I had a little bit of dust, but not so clean. I only used for one day. Then carefully I'm gonna remove the bearing. I'm just gonna put it in a clean place. And all around here, again, I'm going to put the hair pressure. So, all here, this is where the oil come out to lubricate the bar. You want to make sure everything is uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good, uh, clean. And Again, I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, fuel all around to have a nice, deep clean in there. Sorry, I'm kind of a clean freak about these. And especially here in the front part, I'm gonna use a little bit, <coughs> let the fuel uh, do its work. Be scared, this is sharp. Eh? Let it soak for a while because uh, whew, it's this is where it is the most uh, gummed up place. And like I told you, there's nothing wrong using a little bit screwdriver on the flat and helping you to clean it. Like so. But sometimes when it's too hard, just let the uh, the fuel do its trick, its magic. And I can already see then. Uh, wow.
There we go. Look at the front, pretty good, pretty good. Now, around the uh, where you put the oil, it's always oily in there, but I always try to have a nice uh, hand finish. And again, there's nothing wrong using a screwdriver to have a deep clean. If you if your chainsaw are clean, after so many years, it's it's kind of a it's nice. It's a pride. It's 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 a nice thing to to tell others that hey, that's how I take care of my stuff. If you see a dirty chainsaw, the guy is brand new. It's dirty. I mean. Even professionals, they're busy, but they have to chop the chain, they have to take care, they do take the time to clean. Not as deep as I am, because I have plenty of time for doing it. Now this is the scuff mark. Scuff mark, you can remove it. Also, you use, again, you use a deep uh, fuel but it's, it's gonna be harder because scuff mark is coming from the ground and it's it's uh, you just have to let it uh, but it, it's still you are still able to clean a lot see just a little bit now for the inside hole same thing, you use a screwdriver. Pride sense of ownership. That's how I call that. A pride, a pride sense of a chance of ownership. And it applies for various stuff. So, uh, I mean, wow. Okay. Now, Inside of here, remember keep your uh, your filters and just do with a screwdriver remove all the, as much as, as dust as you can. Okay. Now for the shaft around here, make sure it's all clean because this is the crank shaft. Remember that. That's why you need to have it very very clean. So the uh, the clutch inside I already have full of fuel so I'm just going to remove all the dust in there just going to put a little rag make sure it's in there all right Now the bearing which is there, oh, it almost fall down. Just make sure and it's nice and clean. All the little cylinders are there. There's none missing. And what I will do is I'm just gonna put a blob of grease, stick it up. So I've got my blob of grease. I'm just gonna force it into the, cylind uh, the, the barrel cylinders using my uh, gloves then I'm gonna put a nice little coat on the shaft I'm gonna slide the bearing in there make sure it's all covered I'm going to put put the uh, the clutch inside where I need to find the uh, what is it I need a rag because of that little uh, cutting here I need to find the right spot oh it's right there that's it just remember is it the right spot just hold on that's a problem I don't have my glasses eh? Be patient, folks. There we go. Perfect. You heard it like click. 
Okay, at this point I'm gonna put the... I could have a little bit of grease in there between the uh, the washer then I'm going to reintroduce the circlip that's the one million circlip you don't want to make sure you have a lot of spare of these just hold on I'm going to get my pair of pliers Because that's the one you're gonna lose when you clean your chainsaw in the field, flying across the wood. There we go. Nice and lubricated. Okay. So for the chainsaw case, I'm just gonna put it like this. Now for the bar. The bar itself, I'm going to use uh, air pressure to remove everything. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, uh, use the, uh, use the whatever is left in there to clean the bar, the remaining of the bar. So done. Let the fuel do its trick. And you can see, wow, it's already like clean. Fuel is working very good as a cleaner. So now I'm gonna, everything is, at, like you can see, the bar is, uh, now I'm gonna use air pressure. <laughs> pistol so the the sprocket will at the end rotate so I'm looking inside pretty clean pretty clean but if you are in the field you don't have access to air compressor use a uh, your screwdriver put a rag but start from the top where the wheel and then clean it in the bottom that's what you like uh, you want to do you don't want to put the dirt in there same thing in there all right make sure that the oil the, the oils I don't know if you can see there's two holes in there one is there and one is right there these all are very small and they're meant for uh, lubricating the uh, the chains and I'm not putting the right hole this is the big hole those two big holes there are for uh, aligning just hold on just want to make sure no, I was right. The two small oil, very small. This is where the oil pass to lubricate. So this is very important. You make sure that they're, 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 they're clean, okay? At the end of the year, that's why you're gonna change, check if your bar were uh, straight. Like the both sides of the lip of the bar are, uh, are straight. So mine are pretty, pretty good, okay? and. The reason you want to have is make sure the top and the other the, the other side is wearing evenly so you do take the time to look okay and right now I can tell in this side a little bit more wear so I'm gonna flip it like this so it's gonna be inverted for this time okay now for the bar what I'm going to do I'm just gonna put a nice coat of oil on the lip, like you just see. And then I'm gonna put oil all around the, uh, here. To keep the, uh, the wheel uh, lubricated in there, especially during the winter time. I put a nice coat of oil everywhere 
especially for the long storage. It would prevent for corrosion. You, yes, you, I'm crazy. Usually bars don't rust, but I had some rusting because I was living in the maritime. It's very humid, the sea salt and everything. And also uh, cold storage or poor ventilation. Having a nice cold of oil, it will keep your bar in good uh, and good. And also it helped to lubricate because at the beginning, uh, if it's your in the winter time, your chain bar get exposed on uh, various uh, things. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of grease. Just hold on. Where did I put my rag right here? Uh, this is a greaseless uh, wheel bar, but I still do put grease at the end of the tip, and that's. And I, I do each stroke between the, uh, the and it doesn't hurt, trust me, I've been doing that for years and years. What it, the only thing it does, <laughs> it would prolong, prolong, will give you more uh, fun time with your bar. Because it's preventing the wear. So I put oil at the beginning so you have a deep penetration and when everything is around then you just stick the remainder the remaining you push the grease into it. Okay. When that is accomplished, I clean my grease gun. Now, I'm going to put the chain back. Like this. Now, if it was a brand new chain, I will add the chain dip into uh, the same oil I'm using for lubricating. Having an ch oil chain is really help. And the brand new chain always dip in the SE 3D oil for at least 24 hours. It help all the rivets. You have a bit uh, a great penetration. Don't rely on in the, the bar. And I learned that when I was in France. A, a French guy showed me that. Uh, a lumber guy. He was living in northern France, and he told me, and he was using a steel chainsaw, various type. He was a forester and he said, yeah, he's always been doing that and it helped also to cool the chain. There's so many uh, various tricks. Alright, so I'm just going to reconnect the, the bar. Now for the storage, I don't, I don't torque too much the chain for the storage. I just put a little bit of tension. Yeah, just put it up like this. Now everything is oily all around, and I hope you're able to see. I'm just gonna double check with my camera. So with my remaining oil, I'm just gonna oil everything around here, and then I'm gonna put the back. The, the cover, put the uh, the right way the uh, the boat. And remember, at the beginning, I tied too much these boats. I'm just gonna go. Uh, That's it. There we go. Perfect. All right. So, did I clean this? Yes. I got some yellow, yellow paint uh, spray. 
So I'm just going to go put back this. There we go. Perfect. <sighs> so, the last step, I'm already in my train, so I'm just going to go all around. Like this. Now, if my chain needed needed to sharp, one thing I forget to tell you is I sharp my chain right uh, the same day that I arrive. I I, I sharp it is very, and uh, I have maybe one or two days of uh, of done with it. So I forget to do that. Sharp your chain before you clean it. Uh, it's very important, and I'm sorry about that. So uh, yeah, I oil it then. Like again, it's very important to oil your chain. The bar, the all bar was doing that stuff, but uh, the chain, the uh, lubricating oil will help so much to, uh, for the cleaning after. And also lubricating the chain, keep it cool. Now, if you are doing for a very more than six months long term, well, do empty your bar chain uh, reservoir. But I know next summer I'm going to use it for six months. And right now it's uh, I was using winter uh, chain bar oil, so it's very light oil, so it's not like a tick. So. Uh, yeah, it does, it's, it's not doing to clog anything. All right, so folks, there you have it. I did it in front of you, and it's 43 minutes. Oh boy, I'm gonna do a lot of editing, and uh, but this is how I keep my uh, uh, in pristine condition, as you see, my uh, my chainsaw. So uh, I mean. Oh, don't forget to clean your cover too, right? because sometimes they have full of dust in there when you put your cover, uh, dust protecting cover. And oh, yes, I do put oil also on the pocket, and that will help too. All right, while you are doing the cleanup, I was inspecting the casing, the screws, everything is in good condition. Because this thing can be dangerous if it's not in proper uh, condition, so make sure you don't make that. So, I hope you like my, I'm going to try to make it short, but you have it there. So oil your piston ring, make sure the, the fuel cap, now I'm going to lose the fuel cap, because I, I already, uh, so I just keep it like this. You see this is loose, and I'm just going to put it like that, and loosen like this, so it, it will ventilate. The... Um, the piston is oil, so it's not going to corrode. Make sure your clutch is disengaged. It's not engaged, it's disengaged. And that way, and it's working good. So next summer or next uh, early spring, I know my chainsaw is working very good. The chain is sharp. And uh, yeah. So again, thank you very kindly for all your standing support. That was the first for me making two videos in one day because we are the second, the second of uh, December, the, the 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 second, yeah, the second of December, yes. And I was just finishing this morning installing my uh, my chain. Then I washed my clothes, <laughs> totally new wash. Now I'm using the same clothes again. to that in the washer again, and. Uh, yeah, very nice day today. I, had, I was uh, off school day today. They had a party at the school and uh, for the teacher, so uh, so they was, uh, the school was the cool the school was closed. So I, I catch up a lot of my chores. Like I mean, that was a month ago, I believe. I uh, I cut the, the these wood. So yes. All right. So again, thank you very kindly for your standing support. Remember, life is good. I know I say that all the time, but tell yourself that, please. Uh, make your bed in the morning because at the end of the day if everything go bad <laughs> At least you did achieve <laughs> An outstanding thing you make your bed and then it's one achievement 
step every day that's how you do it all right <laughs> because we're we're so many uh, we're busy like even if you're retired so yeah all right so yes life is good take care of yourself and take care again every kind of cheers <laughs> all right i feel guilty i've got to admit i do put armor all over my trench so as you as you all witness to make it very nice and pretty it is one of my tricks to keep it's especially for the plastic it made the, pla uh, the plastic nice and shiny all the handles and I know I'm crazy like that I like when things shines clean it's a, it's a sexy chance so armor all yes and it, you're going to see the difference right away <laughs> Who else on the net that the putting armor hole on Chensa? <laughs> oh boy, I'm gonna have a lot of comments about that. Dave, you're doing armor hole over your Chensa? Oh, yes, it's not only on cars and bike and various stuff. I do use it also on my. Um... No, the only place I use armor on my tractor. It's on my dashboard just to have a nice show, but not often. But this is, uh, I use it only on my car. But uh, so I have a nice and uh, sexy chance of like showroom condition, <laughs> even if it's uh, <laughs> even it's been uh, all right. Sorry, I know I'm, I'm good for the not clean freak house. <laughs> Cheers. Yes, of course I do it also uh, armor all over my John Deere. Oh, that's why it looks so new. <laughs> Cheers.